Welcome to the Non-Residential Outdoor Lighting and Sign Control Requirements video, where we'll discuss California's Building Energy Efficiency Standards, also known as the Energy Code. You'll learn about outdoor lighting and outdoor illuminated sign control technologies and their mandatory Energy Code requirements. We'll end by discussing the documentation needed to demonstrate compliance with the Energy Code. Let's begin by looking at the non-residential outdoor lighting control requirements and technology options. The Energy Code requires that certain lighting control devices be installed for almost all non-residential outdoor lighting applications in new construction, addition, and alteration projects. The Energy Code requires that non-residential outdoor lighting be independently controlled from other electrical loads, and that most outdoor lighting be equipped with controls that are able to turn the lighting off when sufficient daylight is available, as well as change the light level based on a programmed schedule or detected occupancy. Exceptions include outdoor lighting that is required to stay on per a health or safety regulation, and lighting in tunnels required to be continuously illuminated. To comply with the Energy Code's daylight availability requirements, outdoor lights must be automatically turned off when sufficient daylight is available. Two types of lighting controls that meet this requirement are 1. A photo control which automatically turns lighting off and on by sensing the available daylight and 2. An automatic shutoff control, which controls outdoor lighting based on a programmed schedule. One type of automatic shutoff control, called an astronomical time switch, includes a feature that adjusts the programmed schedule according to local sunrise and sunset times. The Energy Code also requires that outdoor light levels be reduced when areas are vacant during both business and non-business hours. This is achieved two ways. One, automatic scheduling controls, and two, motion sensing controls. All outdoor lighting must be controlled by an automatic scheduling control capable of reducing the light's power by at least 50 and no more than 90% during scheduled unoccupied periods. These automatic scheduling controls must provide at least one independent dimming level, in addition to full on and full off. Motion sensing devices control lighting based on detected occupancy by reducing or turning off the outdoor lighting in the area when that area is vacant. Motion sensing controls are required for most outdoor lights rated greater than 40 watts, where the bottom of the light fixture is located 24 feet or less above ground. No more than 1500 watts of lighting power can be controlled by a single motion sensor. Motion sensing controls must be capable of reducing the light's power between 50 and 90 percent during unoccupied periods, including those that occur during business hours. The motion sensing controls must also be capable of automatically turning the light on when the area becomes occupied, automatically turning the light off during vacant periods, and reducing the light to its dimmed or off state within 15 minutes of the area being vacated. Exceptions to these motion sensing control requirements include outdoor sales frontage lighting, lighting subject to health or safety regulations that have a longer timeout period or higher minimum dimming level, as well as the applications listed as exceptions to Section 140.7A. Now let's talk about the mandatory requirements pertaining to luminaire cutoff and the exceptions. Luminaire cutoff requirements regulate how much light can be emitted in various directions or zones, including backlight, uplight, and glare. Many types of outdoor lights must comply with these cutoff requirements, which are collectively referred to as bug requirements. The Energy Code's bug requirements specify maximum zonal lumens and only apply to outdoor lights rated 6200 initial lumens or more. 
Specific requirements are provided in Title 24, Part 11, Section 5.106.8, which is also referred to as the CalGreen Code. Seven types of outdoor lighting need not comply with the bug requirements. Illuminated outdoor signs are one such example. Let's examine the control requirements for illuminated outdoor signs found in Energy Code Section 130.3. Illuminated outdoor signs must be controlled by an astronomical time switch control or a combination control system consisting of a photo control and an automatic time switch control. Signs inside tunnels or large, permanently covered outdoor areas that are intended to be illuminated throughout day and night are exempt. In addition, outdoor signs that are illuminated at night and for more than one hour during the day must be equipped with a dimmer that can automatically reduce the sign's lighting power at night by at least 65%. A specific type of outdoor sign, called an Electronic Message Center, or EMC, must also include demand-responsive controls. EMCs with a connected lighting power greater than 15 kilowatts must be equipped with a control device that allows the sign's lighting power to be reduced by at least 30% in response to a demand-response signal. EMCs that must remain at full power due to health or safety regulations are exempt. We'll now discuss the certificates or forms needed to demonstrate Energy Code compliance to your local enforcement authority. Outdoor lighting and illuminated sign controls must be documented on certificates of compliance and installation. Outdoor lighting controls must also undergo acceptance testing, and results must be documented on certificates of acceptance. All forms are available for download as PDFs on www.energycodeace.com. Note, downloadable certificates of acceptance are for informational purposes only. Actual certificate of acceptance forms may only be accessed and submitted by a certified lighting controls acceptance test technician. The submitted forms must have the logo of an approved acceptance test technician certification provider, or ATTCP. Additionally, you can access Energy Code ACE's Virtual Compliance Assistant Tool at www.energycodeace.com, which is available to help you fill out the Certificates of Compliance. The Certificate of Compliance for Outdoor Lighting, NRCC-LTO-E, is required for all non-residential outdoor lighting projects. Luminaire cutoff information must be documented in Section G and outdoor lighting controls in Section H. Projects with illuminated signs must document compliance information on Certificate of Compliance, nrcc Dash LTS dash E. The installation team must document each required installed control device on the Certificate of Installation NRCI dash LTO dash 01 dash E. If an energy management control system, also called an EMCS, or advanced lighting control system is used to meet the requirements, system information is documented on form NRCI-LTO-02-E. System information for each installed illuminated outdoor sign is documented on Certificate of Installation NRCI-LTS-01-E. To comply with the Energy Code, acceptance testing is required for all projects where outdoor lighting controls are installed in non-residential, high-rise residential, hotels or motel buildings except for those installed in healthcare facilities. Other acceptance testing exceptions include alteration projects where controls are installed to control 20 or fewer lights and outdoor sign controls. 
The outdoor lighting acceptance tests contained in non-residential appendix NA7.8 address motion sensing controls, photo controls, and automatic scheduling controls including astronomical time switches. Acceptance test results for outdoor lighting controls are documented by the Certified Lighting Controls Acceptance Test Technician on the Certificate of Acceptance NRCA-LTO-02-A. The official lighting controls certificates of acceptance may only be accessed and submitted by a Certified Lighting Controls ATT through their approved Acceptance Test Technician Certification Provider or ATTCP portal. It is important to remember that an official Lighting Control Certificate of Acceptance will contain the ATTCP's logo to differentiate it from the information-only version of the form. Let's review what we've learned. Nearly all outdoor lighting systems must include lighting controls to comply with the energy code. Some exceptions do apply. Outdoor lights rated 6200 lumens or more must meet luminaire cutoff requirements, also known as the bug requirements. Outdoor lighting must be shut off during the day using a photo control, astronomical time switch control, or other type of automatic scheduling control capable of turning the outdoor lighting off when daylight is available. Outdoor lighting must be reduced by at least 50% or turned off at night during scheduled unoccupied periods. Certain outdoor lights must also use a motion sensing control to reduce light levels between 50 and 90% when the area is vacant, even if the vacant period occurs during business hours. Illuminated outdoor signs must be controlled by an astronomical time switch control or a combination control system consisting of a photo control and an automatic time switch control. To demonstrate compliance with the energy code, projects that require controls for outdoor lighting or outdoor signs must complete certificates of compliance and installation. And most projects that require outdoor lighting controls also require acceptance testing. The test results must be documented on the Certificate of Acceptance for Outdoor Lighting Controls by the Acceptance Test Technician. That wraps up our review of the non-residential outdoor lighting and outdoor illuminated sign control requirements. For more information, visit the Energy Commission website at energy.ca.gov forward slash ORC.